God, glory for the praise and worship team and the media department and all that helps us put this together. Also, let's just give thanks for all of our children's workers that are working right now on this campus. They're awesome, man. They're Holy Ghost people, I promise you that. You may be seated for a moment on this first Sunday of what man's calendar calls a brand new year. Uh, we're going to receive communion this morning. I love to do it. Uh, 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 first of all, at the last Sunday of every year, which we did. Also, we had a powerful Christmas Eve service. I'm telling you, I thank God for those. And many of the community came out. It was beautiful, and it was a great time. Had a wonderful celebration of New Year's Eve as we were in the marketplace, and it was powerful. We filled a local facility, and we had food folks and fun, and we stopped at midnight in the marketplace and shut everything down and lifted up prayer. And it was awesome. The manager of that facility called me earlier in the evening. And we had been doing this for many years. We just buy them out. It's a slow time for that in that, uh, in that area and business. And so we have always blessed them. And they make more than enough during that time. That will be an off time. And for a church to go in and do that blows their mind. They couldn't believe that. And so he added extra things for us this year. As a matter of fact, he said this, Pastor, I'm not able to come in tonight because he was ill, so I told him we'd pray for his health, but he said, you're the boss tonight. He let me run the facility. He said, you tell my manager exactly what you want, and we're going to give it to you. And they gave us lights, camera, and action. It was a great time, and I thank God for all those of you that came out. It's always a blessing to me, because I don't get to see you in different venues at times, but yet the little ones and the old ones were all in there playing and talking and eating and sharing, and it's just a good time because it's a witness to the community and people come in and seeing uh, this is facility has been bought out for the evening. And it's just it was an awesome time. So I thank God for those that could come and those who support that. It's awesome when we touch our community that way because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. And a community needs to see church in the settings of the marketplace to where we're, we're, we're having fun and we give God the glory. I put on my Facebook a teaching that some of you need to probably look at, and that was New Year's Eve. Is it biblical to celebrate New Year's Day? Is it? Yes. And I gave you scriptures, and I gave you Jewish tradition. And I, I give you a teaching about New Year's Day. It's what we do with it that counts and how we do that. And so it's a great little study. If you want that, you can go on the Internet or probably call the office. I'll get Cindy to get you a copy of that. It's just great. We had a prayer conference between Christmas and New Year's. And it was awesome, Adoration Ministries, awesome, and it was great, and I got to sit in a little bit of that. I was spending Christmas time with my kids and family, but uh, nevertheless, in this house, they've been praying, not only for this house, but for the nations and growing young ones, the lions, teaching them how to roar. It was an awesome thing, so thank you. Let's give God glory for a great, great, great ministry. Came in, and they blew it away. They're always gracious. They always look after themselves. And they leave a residue in here that is something to be cherished. And that is prayer. Amen. So thank you, Shawls. We love you guys. And I know that it's an effort, trust me, to do what you've done, especially that time of year. And so you see, it's not over till it's over is what they say. Amen. And we made sure of that. To the last drop, as Maxwell House says. We got the last drop out of last year. I can tell you that right now. It's good to have you with us this morning. I want to talk about communion. Do this often in remembrance of me. I like the end of year, start of year. We don't do it ritualistically, but we do it in set times and patterns that bring our remembrance back to who and why we do these things. Mark chapter 14 is a way that I love to, to see God spill it out. Has anybody in here do not have elements of communion? Did you not get any? Uh, always check the front when you do that, especially around here. You never know. Uh, but we just make sure that you get some. Anybody in the balcony need any? Uh, we have it all up there. I can't see up there, but somebody help me. All right. It's very vital that you take and participate in communion with us. If you're not, that's okay too. Uh, and I'll teach you why you shouldn't take communion in a few moments. It's a very holy time. 
we have to reverence the house of God. This is not Starbucks or it's not uh, Booger King. This is God's house dedicated to him. And we do that and we reverence the house of the Lord. It's very vital that we not worship this house, but we reverence it because God's in this, in this place in a very special way. A lot of many years of sacrifices for you to be where you're at today. Go look on that wall out there. I'm talking about deacons of the past and leaders of the past that you go through the history books and you'll see where they took personal loans out in their life. We're not making nothing driving buses in the city and working regular jobs in a way, but you can see where they took loans out to help this church, personal loans. The church didn't pay them back. They done that out of, a, uh, out of dedication to put a place in place where you're sitting today. I don't take that lightly. There's been a lot of prayer and sacrifice going to these pews and in these altars and on this campus and the campuses that before that that got us to this place. I'm forever grateful and was always taught to reverence the blessings of God and those who set an authority over me. That's the way I was trained up. And it's not been a bad life, I'm telling you now. It's got me in some fixes and out of fixes, I can promise you. Today we find that Christ brought those disciples in and he was saying, pass this on, boys. And he got him up and says, I'm not going to do this, but the last time on this earth, but there'll be a new time coming when we're going to do this again. Somebody say, old, going to new. Some of you need to learn this this morning. I got a word for you now. Lift that bread up. He took it. The first act that he done in this setting is he lifted it up and he broke it. And he identified the bread to his body. He identified it in the way that his body was broken for us, bruised and beaten for our diseases and and our iniquities, everything. He was broken and beaten. And he also takes it to give us a reminder that there is a body, his body out here today, the body of Christ, that's broken and needs fixed and repaired. And that he is not culturally stopped by that uh, or in intellectually, or does it matter uh, what your pay bracket is? Because there are people who are in need of God, who are richest in the world and the poorest in the world and the in-betweeners. So Father, we lift this bread up and we break it in remembrance that it all started with your body and we give you glory as we receive on this first Sunday the second act that he done is that he took the cup and he lifted it up and he gave thanks and he gave it and he drank it and he identified this blood and he said this was poured out my blood was poured out for you so father we lift this up and we are in remembrance of the cost of what it took for us to be able to go to heaven through repentance and be with the Father. A cost that was paid on Calvary, the blood, the shed blood, not to be taken lightly, to be reverenced in your house. Father God, the house that you established your presence in. We thank you this morning and we lift this cup up in remembrance on a brand new year and receive it now. Amen. Can we give thanks this morning? We thank you, Father. We thank you this morning for salvation today. The third act that he done is that he, he proclaimed and he released the identity that there is a kingdom to come. So not only did he identify his body and his blood, but he said there's hope. We have hope this morning. Aren't you thankful for blessed hope? We got heaven. Heaven to gain and hell to shun. Come on, somebody. You don't hear that anymore, but it's the truth. Come on, man. Heaven to shun. Hey, us dudes. To, to go after. We shun hell. So we got gain this morning. And the fourth act that he done, nobody wants to talk about it, is that he led them in a hymn. It's right in scripture. Jesus was a soul man. Come on, man. Amen. Come on, boys. Let's march on out here to, to the place of glory. Their hymn led them to the Mount of Olives, which simply tells us that he reminded them to do this often in remembrance of me. The, broad, the body is the bread. Uh, the vine, of course, symbolizes it is my blood. But then he said, we're going to tell you, you got heaven, and that's why you're doing this. But then I want you to praise into the Holy Ghost presence. Will you lift your hands right now? And can we praise him for about 30 seconds? Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. This is going to be a year my praise is changing. Yeah, it's going to be a year my praise is changing. Yeah. This is a year I'm going to praise when I don't feel like it. This was going to time a year I'm going to praise you, Lord, not because of my circumstance, but I'm going to praise you because you said above us. Yeah. Shift and change. Release it. Yeah. Come on. 
My God, my God, my healing. It's a year of my healing. It's a year of my deliverance. It's a day, it's a time. My family's coming in. It's a day and a time that your presence will engulf the earth. It's a day and a time that joy will come in, that my prayers will be answered in a way that you get the glory and praise. Somebody give him glory right now. Come on, I'm going to praise you. I'm going to praise you no matter what. I'm not praising you out of emotion. I'm praising you because of what you've done for me. You saved my soul. Yay! Woo! Take a drink of that, honey. Come on, somebody. Somebody take a dose of the ghost right now. Tell them I'm going I'm to praise you because there's more. Do you know there's more? Greater works. Yay! My potential hasn't even reached anywhere near the top. Come on, praise him because you've got opportunities coming your way. Somebody give him a hand clap of praise. Welcome the internet on. They've been watching you, man. You're standing in the house. Grab your Bible. Go to Psalms 31 for a moment. I'm going to read you a scripture. I'm going to tell you what the Lord spoke to me earlier this, well, the last couple of weeks. Always does it at the end of the year. I believe a prophetic release uh, and a challenge to not only us individually. I do have a section that is individually the challenge. And also have a section individually moved for the church. And now I speak to the church, not just this church, you understand. Uh, nor am I qualifying or speaking anything to you personally. I don't sit around behind the desk and, and when I write this thing, Bill, Bill, Bob, Maddie, Bob, I don't do that. It's for the body. If it feels that way, then as they told Cinderella, if the shoe fits, honey, wear it. But don't get mad at the one that carries the shoe. And that will be happened this morning. The shoe will be brought to you. And you'll have the opportunity to either let it be put on or walk away from it. You can be a princess or you can be a maiden or a, ha or a little floor sweeper. I don't care, but, but it's our dependence. Somebody say choice. choice. Okay. So Psalms 31 begins to tell us something very important. 
And it's the premise of what I'm going to speak about, and I'll, tell you, I'll break it down for you. In thee, O oh Lord, do I put my trust. Somebody say trust. trust. Do you really trust him today? He said, let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. So the trust factor is not just for those who are around you that pat you on the back and maybe give you a little pat one and, and, and maybe enable you or put you on breast milk and, and do those things. I'm talking about when you're putting your trust in it, that's when the enemy's looking at you or your circumstances. Oh, Lord, do I put my trust in you. Bow down, Lord. Bring your ear to me because I need delivered speedily. Some of us need delivered. Can somebody say amen? amen? And I'm not talking about just spitting pea soup, demon, exorcist type things. I'm talking about attitudes, habits, and hurts. Be thou my strong rock, O Lord, and a house of defense to save me. Say a house, a house. A defense to save me. Verse 3. Why? Proclamation time for you're my rock and you are my fortress. <laughs> Did you feel that? Wow. Did you feel that? For you are my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for your name's sake, somebody say testimony. For your name's sake, you lead me and guide me. Father, help us be a testimony past our circumstance. Father, help us be one who walks trusting you. Father God, deliver us from things that would hinder us this year and let us fall in love with you and nothing else but you. Let our face face be before you and our faith be moving around and in our lives. In the name of Jesus, amen. You may be seated this morning. I spoke to the Lord earlier this week, and, and the Lord spoke to me out of, this, out of this particular psalm to begin to kick off some things about fortress and truth and things of that nature. Now, I want you to listen real close for a few moments. And if you want to take notes, fine. If not, we'll have it on the Internet. But this thought, so these word thoughts begin to percolate in me on the 30th in the a.m. early, and then I stepped into the prayer conference for a little bit. And this was percolating in me, and I began to pin it out do I do my devotions? By the way, I've already started reading my Bible through this year. I pray and trust that you have. If you have not, then you can go to an app and you can download one that I'm using this year. I do different, different translations through the year. And I'm reading through the New Living Translation this year. And it's the Bible in one year, New Living Translation. And it's a very simple app and it helps me keep track. And I pray and I release that to you that you learn to read the Bible all the way through. I find that I run into a lot of Christians that have never read the Bible all the way through. They leak parts of it, or uh, like many, will start a daily devotion, but they quit about February. I want to challenge you, the enemy does not want you reading the word of the Lord. Well, Pastor, I don't read. No, 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 no. I'm, not, I'm talking about reading, not digging out sermons. or Just read the word, the leisure you read. There's other times that you read for study. But every one of you in here listening to me, you're to be a disciple of the word. And if you, ought to, if you, you can't release something you don't have. I'm not talking about memorization. That's a whole different aspect. That's a whole different thing. But I challenge you. I do from this pulpit as I do every year. Get yourself a program and make sure that this time next year you're starting to read the word again through. It only takes a few minutes. It's laid out very nicely and it will help you. As a matter of fact, I, I yelled at Karen yesterday, not in a bad way, but hey, Karen, because I, I, I had extrapolated something that I had not seen. Ever, you ever do that? You just read and all about. I've read the Bible many times, and so I was into genealogies, and everybody wants to skip through them. But you know, I was in Matthew, part of Matthew. I was already over in First Genesis and Matthew yesterday, and in the genealogies of Jesus, in my translation, it brought out something that I had not seen, and I'll release it to you, probably sometime this year. But it pertains to women. It's pretty awesome how that works, and so I'll probably bring that out. A little later and everybody gives me an amen on that one but you'll find things like that if you just take time to read the word if you're not a good reader guess what through the magic of everything we have in technology they have audible bible shazam and you just have to turn it on and you can listen to it amen but be careful because if you're like me if i'm in my car and the word's flying around sometimes i gotta pull over or get run over. You know what I'm saying? I just get excited about it. That's just me. 
So as we go into this new year, the thoughts pertaining, I want to remind you that there's shifting taking place. You may have your bulletin. We're going to have church every Wednesday night this month. And we'll go, oh, yeah, wow. Woo. Wow, I seen the Pentecostal handshake. And like, wow. We're going to break it down a little bit this month. Tessa, we're going to have to build the body service. That will be this Wednesday night, the 5th, and that's when we have community prayer. Last time, if you were here, it was awesome. Filled the place up. 30-some pastors, uh, seven or eight churches. It was awesome. And so we're not looking for numbers. We're looking for glory. And we're looking for uh, something shifting in the city, and I can tell you that it is. So this, write it down, 6.30, Wednesday night. You won't be nothing but griping because it gets dark early anyway. So you might as well come into the house of God. And so 6.30, build the body service. The next Wednesday is January the 12th, and that's 5.12. Come on, somebody. You're going to see, uh, is that right, the 12th? No, that's not the right. What is next? What is, I don't have my calendar. I'm talking about Wednesday. Yeah, it is. Wednesday the 5th, Wednesday the 12th. Wednesday prayer meeting on the 19th and Bible study. So we're going to bring Bible study. So on the second uh, Wednesday, this is the 12th, we will have Bible study. Now there's a men's Bible study, a women's Bible study, and we're going to do a little one in here. So it's going to be awesome. Somebody say awesome. Now I'm finding something that just rocked me a little bit. You remember I was preaching last month? Probably didn't remember, but I did preach last month. And I, pro I showed you the, the prophetic word of the numbering of the Sundays, right? And I broke that out. I'm going to wait a little bit. But I just noticed 5, 12, 19, 26. Do you know that the Wednesday dates in January are the Sunday dates in December? Signs and wonders. Now, if you remember what I taught you, what, 5, 19? Somebody said, oh, I should have taken notes. Took notes. Yes, you should have. Amen. Because it's phenomenal. But you see the 5, 12, 19, 26 correlate with what God wants us to begin to chase after when it comes into the new year. And I'll have to teach that to you, and I will, proudly, because it's God, amen? So there's a shift taking place. Somebody say, all right, man. It's a challenge to you to grow deeper and to change the routine of the church. Now, this is the, the today was the last 8 a.m. service we're going to have this month. So we won't have an 8 a.m. service. Probably won't affect any of you at all. We will be meeting, and I want everybody, all the services to be in here at 10 a.m. Now, a lot of my workers will miss out, and they're going to have to work, and maybe you could help them and rotate or help them out a little bit because they come in at 8 o'clock. That's why we do that, so that they can be in service too. And so we're, gonna, we're not going to have but a 10 a.m. service, and we're going to have Wednesday night services. And so it's in the bulletin. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be grandiose, and it's going to be superb. Come on, somebody. <laughs> yeah, these are words some of us don't use anymore because we're all down in the gloom. I'm telling you what, I'm pumped. Come on, this is going to be a powerful time of the Lord, amen? Because in February, I'm going to call you to a fast, and everybody said, all right, because we're going into an invasion conference, and I just talked to New Zealand, and I don't know, a couple places through the holidays wanting to know about invasion. Is it on? And I'm telling you, we still got the green light so far. Evasion's on. Can somebody say amen? And so them's the things I want you to read into the bulletin. Now. Pertaining to December the 30th, God gave me some words. I'm going to release it, and it's going to all tie together, if you'll stay with me for a few moments. Talking pertaining to pure flowing, per, pertaining a uh, pure flow of God's timing. Somebody say timing. Now, the Lord impressed upon me that we have been trained by our culture to time frame our lives and events. We proclaim that new things start and old things go on a design date that's been set by man. We construct our days by man's ways of counting time. Doing so by these marked dates, we proclaim old things are gone. For example, we'll stand up during New Year's Day and New Year's Eve and say, I'm going to quit this and turn right around and get it started. Some of us buy treadmills and we get mad when we get somebody to give us a treadmill and we all go to join the gyms. Everybody, they love people to join the gyms and they'll tell you, $10, you can join the gym. And all of a sudden, you put, get caught in the $10 cycle, but then you forget to go to the gym, but you still pay them the 10 bucks. Somebody's going, dang. We were riding one time when uh, 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 one of the workout centers started growing really big, and me and Sister Karen was on the road, and I love her. No matter what, I keep her in prayer. She's got a, uh, a sinus situation here, not COVID. She's got a little sinus thing, and so she wanted to stay home because people think she's got COVID, and she don't. And so uh, it's been going around. My granddaughter's had it just a couple of days, uh, snotty nose. Uh, by the way, somehow the common cold went away.
Last I heard, they hadn't found a cure for the common cold yet. Breast. Right? And I don't know, the flu must have flew away too. I'm not sure. But, but, but listen to me for a moment. I'm, I'm, te- I'm going to teach you something if you're listening. Might I remind you that you must awaken to the truth that I, the Lord, set above all eternity and time on this earth. I am time, I am life, and I am. You hold to me. Then you will see the time frames you are to seek out for your life and for the days ahead of you. You are then to walk into my leading. Do not set or hang your days that are ahead of you on man's paragraphs, sentence context, nor mere words released by a one time a year season of man's constructed time mindsets. I am eternal and I never end and I am ever doing. Learn my word and let it illuminate your now moments as you allow my Holy Spirit to lead you through the now timelines of me. Then you will begin to be more understanding of my glory and my fire presence. You remember, revelation of my now time comes forth to those who learn to be very vertical in their relationship with me. And from that, a vertical trust and understanding comes forth that I am really God. This then will set forth a faith in my, God speaking, my daily activities as I position my disciples as they move forward in my design time and plans. They will not hesitate then to release my active fire presence. For my word totally linked to your praise, my word totally linked to your worship, must become a lifestyle pattern that will keep my now time fully centered. You know, the word says suddenly there was, and suddenly, those are now times. Those are kingdom time sets. Now time frames are not to be selected meetings or not to be convenient service times. For them are your time frames, and God says no more. You are to launch forward in all corporate settings, my friend of fire, because you have stepped into kingdom time sets. My time is not marked by man's time. Very simple, but yet for many it will be very complex. They'll open up, uh, this will open them up to moment by moment, glory to glory, now time frames of my presence. There is more promised and nothing has indicated that you have promises for tomorrow. You are to learn that my time frame is now. My time frames are set from kingdom-minded disciples who are desperate for my presence to manifest. Thus, from that comes true ministry, not works. You take this to heart, that this time of change, New Year's, according to man's calendar, is fleeting and very soon forgotten because it calls for a hope that has no substance, carries no responsibility or actions with it. But I want you to understand that my children are to set up to release the now times of my kingdom, the Alpha and Omega time frame, that which is eternal. It's already set. That they are to release my presence, my salvation, in my Holy Spirit fire. Each one of us have called to walk in to the dynamics of the Spirit. We're not to be predicated by these things of, 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 of false New Year's hope. And so many say, today it's over and I'm moving. And when it's not over, they quit moving. It's because your hope is in nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. This is a time that we need to listen to the Spirit of God and know that what man says never overrides what God's Word says. So whenever you're walking in kingdom principle and the now time tables of God, You'll find yourself standing in a grocery store line and immediately you'll pay for someone's groceries. You're not paying ahead to where they just wave at you and you don't have no conversation. That's okay. You buy somebody's coffee behind you. What do they do? I look for opportunities to not only give but to minister to them. That's why I like to stand at the gas pump. I got them chained to me for five or ten gallons. I'm talking about the mindsets and the timetables that when you're in the doctor's office that you're listening to God speak through the situation to get you to their situation. 
Say amen, Pastor. See, I'm getting you in the time that you sang so eloquently for so long this morning that he's the God of the breakthrough. Is he truly the God of your breakthrough? Are you trusting for the breakthrough before it happens? What if God breaks through past your time on this earth? It doesn't negate the fact that God still has his design plan and his principles never fail. They're never ending. And praise the Lord, we are on this marked time to release a seed that will be a harvest way past our time on this earth. The church is awakening to this fact. Wake up! Process of my church, the second word. I'm taking the church through a solidification process. I'm taking the church into an ordered, solid state. From a disordered state of fear, confusion, and foggy stupors. I'm showing them what it looks like to be a beautiful bride. Forgetting the former things of chaos that the world has brought forth. Allowing the enemy to come in and change the very DNA of my body. You're stepping into a new and refined church order. You have a new face, says the Lord. This face will look humble and it will surrender and it will be totally accepting my forward march time sets. I will not worship. It's not to worship presence performance, not to worship ritual presentation or self-ambition, but it will be wholly pure, full of righteousness and self, self-righteous. In other words, to bring me only the forefront and the flesh activities will be purged. You're not to worship and to praise because you're going through something, children. You are to worship and praise because I saved your soul from hell. The way you react in the situations of this earth predicate who will follow your faith. And sadly, many of the church has failed because we're emotional messes of flesh Instead of Holy Ghost empowered children of a most high God. Your former ways are now to, to, to be left behind at my altars in the burning fire. Then and only then will coming together of the latter days of your life, then they will align with the former days coming together in a way that it will bring testimonies because there's transformation in your life. Those who allow me into their life We'll begin to see times, the time frames ignited around them. And they'll begin to walk in such a glory of change, provision for people in desperate need. My fire will consume all things. So you can burn for him wholly and with passion like never before. Can you have passion for me when everything's coming against you? Can you walk with the firebrand that's so abnormal for me that sets those around you in amazement that you can still praise God when all hell's knocking at your door? This is the time set and the firebrand I'm looking for. Set your feet now on my ordained plan with obedience and my calling. Release faith, faith in me. And then my now time will break loose in a way that I am making you strong to walk with a forward stride. Your cadence is not in your, in your eloquency or your speaking. Your cadence is in the sins that you have asked God to purge from you. The cadence comes when holiness sets in. In my time frame of man's marked year for 2022, it will be groundbreaking release. And there is a shaking that you'll go through but it's going to propel you forward in me. Many of the bastard sort, many of the bastard sort, many of the bastard sort that contrived against Paul, that same spirit is being revived by the Antichrist spirit. Bastard sorts will contrive against the house of God. Bastard sorts will contrive against the leadership and the memberships of many churches. They're all designed from hell's camp to discredit and to stop the now time move of my hand on this earth and you have the keys to stop it now. Somebody praise him in this house. 
Do not forget what it took to get you to this point. You are to stay the course no matter what. And he told me to have you repeat that. I am to stay the course no matter what. I am to stay the course no matter what. This will be, mon this will be a monumental uh, occasion in your life that will bring you into alignment into the body of Christ because from that flows His presence and will take it into the marketplaces of the world around you. It's time to quit being selfish with yourself and release those things that draw attention to your, your plans and your situation and ask God to break your heart because he said this, there's others that are worse off than you are and that is church, they're going to hell and you have the witness to show them Jesus. Somebody praise him in this house right now. Prophetic word coming to 2022. You know me, I chase after numbers. I look at the Hebrew a lot. I study the Greek and has for years. I've always given you stuff. So I looked up some insights here on 5782 and 2022. I want you to understand that this is not a new year. We're behind. We run by a Roman calendar. The new year actually started in September. The Jewish calendar started the year 5782. 5782. The big port part is the 8-2. It's like the, the, the decades, 20, 19, things like that. But we're looking into the Hebrew calendar for a moment. And so you're celebrating 2022 by the Roman calendar, which is fine. It helps you mark your work and do things, your vacations, and la di da da do 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 But spiritually speaking, there was a breaking that took place in September because the Hebrew calendar brings us in alignment to the year 5782. The word 80 in 5780 brought us in that year into the word of pay, which means mouth. Not only that, but it's in the 80s in the Greek or in the Hebrew that brings us into the, it is the decade of the mouth. So the whole decade of the 80s, 57, 81, 80, all the way through, is called the decade of the mouth. In every year it pertains to the mouth speaking to certain situations. We had the mouth of the Father, the mouth of the Son. And now, this year, 82 is pay still. But it's tied to 2022 because of the humanity's calendar, which also means cough or beth. Now, I'll get to that in a few minutes. So pay is the mouth. Somebody say mouth. So God's told us to guard our mouth. It's talking about the Word of God. Now, pertaining to this year, it's talking about the Word revealed in this house. It's talking about the palm of God's hand. The release. I could go on and on. It brings us to divine insights, and it talks about new houses speaking to God's house being renewed and refined. So prophetically speaking, 5782 is, two, is 2022 shows us this quickly. 22 in the Hebrew letter of the alphabet is the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It's a tav, T-A-V. But uh, uh, in, in the numerical value here, because the Hebrew language is cool, it paints pictures and it has numerical values. It's awesome. It's like matrix to the word. What we find here is that it means 400. So we find that Israel was in Egypt bondage for 400 years. We find there was a famine in the, uh, uh, of the word of God for 400 years, from Malachi to the coming of Jesus. We find 400 years, by the way, uh, that was when the Mayflower hit the United States of America. So we find 22 in the Hebrew has value of 400. 22 in the Hebrew is the last letter in the Hebrew alphabet, which means this, signifying completion. This is the year that God's calling his children to let him complete things in your life. It's the year of completion. And also it signifies a time to mark or sign something. It also signifies truth. So you're going to begin to find great truths emerge this year. The Tav we begin to find marks us, and it ties us to Ezekiel chapter 9. It talks about the marking of the doorpost and the blood of the lamb. It also talks about the destruction of God's temple. Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 3 says this. Now the glory of God. Somebody say now. 
the glory of God. What you find here is a transference of time. You step out now, he says, now, kingdom time sets, he pertaining to the glory of God. God's glory manifests when children allow God's time to set in and they're not predicated or they're not directed by man's calendar of time. You see, when you're challenged to use man's calendar, you're always projecting ahead next month, next year, vacation, whatever it may be. But in God's calendar, it's right now. Right now, I'm going to move. I'm not going to wait till I'm smart enough, pretty enough, or rich enough. I'm moving because God is my God. Somebody say amen in here. The glory of the Lord now, he says, of Israel went up from the cherubim where it had been and moved to the threshold of the temple. So what we find here, that suddenly in a God time, in that time set, the glory of God shifted. It had been with the cherubims, and now the Bible says it settled into the temple. It says, then, then when that took place, then the Lord called to the man clothed in linen who had the writ kit at his side and said, go throughout the city of Jerusalem and put a mark on their foreheads so those who grieve and lament over all the detestable things that are done in it, slaughter the old men, the young men, and the women, the mothers, and the children, but do not touch Anyone who has a blood mark begin in my sanctuary. So they began with the old men who were in front of the temple. Now we find that when the kingdom takes place, kingdom moved and glory moved from heaven to earth. It moved not only in earth first, but the glory hit the house of God. And he began to move in the house of God. And he began to move on the elders in the house of God. The old men, referencing the, those who are mature. Some of us are still wearing diapers and sucking on bottles when we ought to be guarding the kingdom time sets and the presence of God in the house. Can somebody say amen? It relates to Peter when he says this in 1 Peter 4 and 17. For it is time. Somebody say time. Kingdom mindset. For it is time. You're not going to like this, but this is cool. It is time, here comes the glory. It's time for the judgment to begin in God's household. And everybody said, wow! Boy, Pastor, I'm telling you, what a service, man. I felt the glory of God hit, and the judgment of God hit the house. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When we ought to be going, hallelujah, hallelujah. God's judgment brings purging, brings purity, and brings his presence. Somebody in the house say amen. You're moving into that atmosphere. Praise God. <laughs> judgment, it says. Suddenly the kingdom time opened up. <laughs> God's house. He's moving. It says, and it begins with us. Lift your hand. Father, oh man, I, got, I wish I wouldn't have come this morning. Father, let it begin with me. My attitude, the things I say, the things I contrive, the things I have done in the house. Father God, let it begin with me. Somebody say amen. amen. Now I got news for you. If you don't agree with those prayers, it don't matter. He's going to do it anyway. I'll never pay for patience. I got news for you. You'll get them. He'll make sure of that. Now watch this. Now time set kicks for the judgment to begin in the house. In my household, he says, if it begins with us, let it begin with us. Then he says, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? It's quite a challenge going into the new year. Number two in Hebrew, by the way, is a word that symbolizes house. It's bet. And it means out of the alpha, it's a pictograph. Alpha, the alpha, the omega, the alphabet. Two, we see, says house. What's interesting about the number 80 is the mouth. It symbolizes the mouth. We talked about that. But what we forgot to understand is that the Hebrew Bible does not start with alpha. The Hebrew Bible starts with beta, which means house. His word is to the house, and from the house, it goes out from the house. And so today, I challenge you that you're in a year when you need to learn the word and read it and live it and release it, but let the word wash you 
and cleanse you so that you can be used of the Lord. And it begins in the house of God. 2022, 5782 means this coming up. It means rest. Where is rest? It comes in the house of the Lord. For we're going to find some things take place. We're witnessing the end of something and the beginning of something. That's what we're witnessing. And it begins in the house of God. Glory. Give him praise in this house right now. Watch. This taking place, this, this, this in your face glory is what I call it. When the glory moves, things happen. It's going to be marked by the fine truth. And it's going to be according to where we're positioned. For some, it's going to be great deliverances. There's going to be events like the Exodus pass through or Passover. It's going to be so awesome. For others, it's going to be time-consuming because what's going to happen if they don't move through, this is going to take place in a way that he will reveal and expose corruption, evil agendas, and things of that nature. The call's very clear. We are to forward march and release God's fire. But to release God's fire, we first must be touched by God's fire. It's a time, my friends, where God's increase is going to be on a very supernatural level. And it's going to begin in the house of God. Is it not any wonder that the enemy wants you away from the house of God? He wants you sitting at home watching every doctrine that's on planet Earth. He wants you away from God's house in the comfort of fear and not being with your brothers and sisters. Because and let me tell you something, back in the day, and I don't want to go back that far where we you know, walked the school up here and down. Well, I want to tell you something. I've seen altars on fire so much that sinners would crawl to an altar. I've watched church service where drug addicts will come and bring their, bring their sins to an altar. Nobody would judge them. I've watched the move of God move in such a way that whenever people would just begin to weep in the presence of the Father. And I've watched them come and repent in such a way that it brings a fire because the altars are there to purge us. Never let the fire go out in the house of God. And one of Pentecostals, wah, wah. But you see, that's not what we do here. What we do is we let God touch us and purge us. For the first thing we want God to do is to take our dross to the top so that his glory can move in the house. Lift your hands. Father, I'm releasing this, that we understand the glory of God and that your glory is righteousness, that your glory is doing your thing in our midst as we get out of the way. Father God, it's not time to play church. It's time to be a church. And it's time to walk with faith and trust you because when things come at us, and they will, it will not shake our worship in our praise or our faith. Somebody say amen. Give him a shout of glory in this house. Come here. Let me finish. Not done. So we go on for a moment. Matthew 16 and 18, he says this. Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock, which is Jesus, the confession of Christ, he says I will build what? My church. And he said, from that, he said, then the powers of hell will not conquer it. Come on, somebody. So if we know that God is, is, is in challenge and empowers the church, we know that hell wants to stop the church, then why do we want to get away from the house of God? No, we want to run to the house of God because every time you move into the house of God, profess your faith, you're pushing the gates of hell backwards and your babies will begin to run to God. Your city will begin to flourish with God. Sin will be exposed. Come on, somebody. In the house, which it should be. And in your city, somebody say amen. Corruption will be purged out because we are fire flames that come to God's house, get in his word, let God work on us with his word, and hit them streets as a firebrand. Somebody praise him in this house right now. You betcha, baby. You better look out, honey. Come on, somebody. The bride is on the move. Hell does not like you sitting in a pew. Hell don't mind you bypassing a pew of discipleship and training and fire and just go out and do your thing. He loves bananas, I tell you all the time, he loves a banana away from the bunch because a banana away from the bunch gets peeled every time. It's time for you to shake it up, that's what he told me. Shake up your faith, get out of your situation because you have to allow me in this situation. Activation will settle by. I want you to lift, lift your hand for a moment and ask the Lord. Lord, if there's anything in our lives that's not solid in our spiritual walk, in our talk, in our actions, 
you show us. And Father, I know that you already know. So Father God, I release those today in a few moments. I'm going to ask you to allow the fire of glory to purge my life so that when I leave here today, I'm on my way to a very fast-paced kingdom mindset that will release the time for somebody around me to receive Christ or to receive their healing or to receive encouragement or hope. Father God, I pray that we get so on fire and, and, and so impassioned with you that our babies fall in love with you, not our religion, that they're not afraid of God, that they feel his presence and comfort, that many times before we point a bony finger at them, they hear us at night when we slip in very silently and sit at the, bed of the foot of their bed and start praying in the Holy Ghost. And Father God, we may grab them and say, look, I got news for you. My prayers go way past my lifetime. So I got news for you. My grandma taught me this. I'm going to tell you right now. Honey, I don't know, may not see it now, but I know that it's done. And so you better get ready. You better get ready because it will happen sometime in your lifetime. I've released it. I'm not burdened by it. I don't worry about it. I'm not even leaving sleep over it. The only sleep that I've learned to lose is when I'm praying in the ghost, when I'm just praying. That's the only sleep I lose. But I got news for you, honey. You're a done deal. It's signed and delivered. It's a promise from my father to me, and you come out of my bones. You come out of my flesh. I birthed you out of my womb or I put my seed in there. I want you to hear me, honey, and you hear me well. I am not letting the devil torment me about you. I have given you to God, and I trust God with you, and I'm moving forward because my firebrand is hotter than any flame or torments from hell. I will not let the enemy rob one minute of my praise, one minute of my joy. I have covered it with the blood of Jesus, and I'm walking forward, releasing the fire. Somebody praise him in this house right now. Come on. Somebody get set free. Somebody get set free. You better hear me, honey. My God. He's the God of my breakthrough. Psalms 31 and 1 says this. Turn there just for a moment. Ooh, I feel my dad is so, wow. Feel father? I feel him in here. Passion. God, that we have passion. We have passion for you. And no matter anybody around us don't love you, I do. And I'll set a fire wherever I go. And it won't be to draw attention to me and make people mad. It's that when the ghost shows up, the Holy Spirit begins to purge their hearts. I want to be in that kind of kingdom downtime. That's walking in a dimension, folks, that's not bound by a Roman calendar. That's walking in a dimension of faith that many people don't understand. That's walking when you can look at people. Let me tell you something. I'll just be honest with you. There's a lot of times from this pulpit that I can move in and out, as you alluded to the other day. I can move into a lot of different anointings, and I have to watch it. I don't get crisscrossed up. I can read your mail. There's a lot of times I can walk out here right now and lay hands on you, and I've done that, and many of you know that, and speak things over you and call things out of you. I can do that right now, but I'm trying to stay very focused because there's a word in here i got to get out. Don't you think at any moment when I'm up here preaching that the Holy Spirit, is, I always tell people, I said, well, you, how do you do that, Pastor? I said, there's little, it's just like a little light that comes on over people as I'm preaching. I can't see a lot of your faces. I can't even see that balcony up here, but I can see his, his glory. And that really messed a lot of people up. But you see, you hear me, and you hear me well. My Bible tells me that there's a time when God's glory hit the house. You're not hearing me. It moved from heaven with the cherubims and went to the temple. Then the revelation came to the men of God. And then he said, do this. So there's not a given time that we don't come in. You think we're not in here at four in the morning praying and there's a lot and hosting things and doing things? Let me tell you something. His glory's thick in here. Very thick. And I can tell you as I look, and that's why I move to and fro like Rick Shea Rabbit, because there's some of you today that need to get right with God. Or somebody's not really right with God. You're playing the actions, and, and it happens in every church. Some of you have duties in church, but you don't have, God don't have church in you. It's easy to hide behind your duties, but not hit the altars. Pastor watches. I'm a man of God. I can tell who's in the house and who spends time in the purging fire of God. 
Some of us are struggling today because you don't spend time in an altar. I don't know whether it's pride or humility or you're just ashamed. Never be ashamed of God's house. But some of the struggles that you face is because you've never submitted to the fire of God. You need to hit in his presence. You don't need pastor blowing on you. I'll pray with you, but it doesn't come in me. The power comes through us. But you hear me and you hear me well and you mark it. That's why I'm always cautious. And people will tell you, I'll call you down if there's a move of God in here and you're not reverencing it. I'll call you down. Don't get offended by it. It's that the glory's in here. And I want that glory because nothing moves. Moses said, I'll not move till your glory goes before me. I want to tell you right now, it's a very solemn time. You're in a transitional period of the earth. It's just not man's calendar. There's a God calling. I gave you scriptures and taught you even through the marking of the Hebrew lettering. We're in a very defined time on this earth. Won't you come with God? Won't you burn with God? Won't you let God get you in a position that you can be a mouthpiece for this generation? Can you be a mouthpiece without being in the front? Can you be a ladder where people walk on your back? Eloquently brought out, and I was so glad to hear the young ones in that panel seem to five folk for what it is. And that is, my back's been stepped on many, 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 many times because it's supposed to be. If you're not, if you're not a leader, especially in an apostolic anointing, you better get used to having footprints on your back and head. And many times they won't look back. They just use you to get where they're at. If, in fact, they're walking with God, they'll make it. But if not, they won't be up there long. I see it time and time again. But it doesn't bother me. My assignment is to preach and to release. That's all I have to worry about. But I'm telling you this morning, there is anointing in here. God's dealing with hearts. And what he's saying is be cautious not to carry these things now into another year. Don't carry them any further. He wants you free. How many want to be free? How many of you want God's time? How many want to be walking in God's time? It's better than apple time. Psalms 31 and 1 says, I thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me my righteousness. Bow down your ear to me and deliver me speedily. Some of you, we need to walk in that today. Be thou my strong rock. Be a house of defense to save me. For you're my rock, my fortress. You're, for your name's sake, will you guide me? In other words, your presence and your power be a witness. We begin to find something takes place. Look down at Psalms 31, 15. It says this again, kingdom dynamics, what I've been teaching you. He says, my time. Here's kingdom now. It just shift. He said, my times. What he's saying is, he says, I've tried my time set. I've tried my calendars and my events. He says, my times are in your hands. Can somebody say amen in here? It's time for us to say, my time is in your hands. My plans are in your hands. I'm not going to be disgusted and busted if it ain't going my way. Because you got a divine plan. It ain't about me, it's about you. He says this, he calls out, oh God, oh God, oh Lord, oh Lord, deliver me. And then he says, my time are in your hands. In other words, I'm about to take this all and put it into kingdom dynamics. Somebody in here get a hold of this today. God's beginning to tell you, give your times, these situations, give them to God and put them into his mindsets. Deliver me from the hand of my enemy. I prayed this prayer this week, not only for me and the church, but I prayed it for individuals. I prayed this this week. Some are going down a rocky road. Some are detaching from things they need to be attached to. Some are forgetting the importance of their witness. My times are in your hands. I'm just going to walk where you want me to walk. But I need delivered from my enemies, from them that persecute me. Times here talks about an event, experiences, unusual things. Anybody have any unusual things just pop up in the last few weeks? Just a thing. Well, that's because some of us may be walking on our times and not God's. You see, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day is something that we begin to see and following in the next weeks ahead. All of a sudden, everybody's about getting rid of the old thing and getting into the new. But those things you see, we begin to watch. 
begin to slip away because there's no, there's no rooting to them. In other words, I have no faith in anything. I'm trying to do it myself. I'm going to lose 10 pounds. I'm going to quit eating. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. No, 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 no. we got to learn to say my times are your times. I need delivered from this stuff. This is a time that we need to get into the river of God that carries us downstream. And we want to be in his fire praying presence to where we're not carrying any luggage with us, but we're burned out purged out, dross to the service, and we're ready to step into service. Is anybody hear me? Your city needs a church that works on kingdom time. My time is in your hand, Lord. Deliver me. Paul's saying this, and they're teaching us out of Scripture, or David, that this is something that references to what Paul called learning to pray constantly. Learning to be praying without without any ceasing to learn to stay in step with God so this morning my challenge is to you to understand that you put your trust in him the Bible tells us that when we do it in the house of God that we can begin to find out something that this is the month this is the decade of the mouth it is the last number 22 we begin to find is a time when he's speaking to his house God's house and we're finding where he's speaking to each one of us. God, purge me. Never let the fire go out of not these altars, more explicitly right here. Fire of repentance, fire of commitment, fire of presence. One of the words that it gave me came in a time when I sat back, put my glasses down. Okay, God, what are you showing me? I'm praying for some families going through it. Praying for some church things. Just praying. And he took me back to a picture. Came up on my internet. Just boom. And it was a picture of my oldest grandson sitting in a brand new set of drums. Now it said on. He's in his recording studio, and he's and he's with that headset. And he'd been saving his money. They don't give him. He had. He worked. He saved it up, and he had enough to go down to go up the full. What's that? Full, what's that place? Streetwater, Sweetwater. If you know anything about music, and he bought him a brand new set of drums. Saved money up. Now, this particular grandson of mine, headsets on and all, in his recording studio, is 17 years old. They told me he wouldn't live when he was born. But God showed me that picture. He said, you remember how mad you were at me when he was born? Yeah. You remember how upset you was at me, preacher? Yeah. You remember the day you were at Riley Hospital, and they wheeled him in, and you were praying, and they brought a great big syringe that big, and they stuck it in his chest, and you had to run out? I do remember that, Lord. Do you remember when you ran out in the hallway who you ran into? Yeah, Lord. A bunch of Amish people. Remember what they done? Yes, sir. They laid their hands on me. They sensed that I was grieving. They laid their hands on me and just prayed. I broke out and went into the basement of that facility. And down low was a chapel. And I ran to that chapel and I just laid down on my face and just wept. And I was mad. I was giving God the four with. Anybody ever been in that position? Probably not. You're so holy. I was a preacher for a lot of years. He said, you remember that picture now? Yeah. He says, you know all the glory and all the praise you're giving me now? And how wonderful that he's 17, still living, and he's smart in school, and he's writing music, and I don't call it music, but he does. You know, it's a different type. It's his style. And he's got a recording studio, and he's doing all this. He's blind. You remember that? Yeah. He says, let me tell you something, son. That kind of faith that you release is not going to make it in these end times. You ever been spanked by God? What do you mean? He said, well, now you're giving me glory and praise after the fact. You wasn't praising me when you got the testimony that he wasn't going to make it. You wasn't giving me glory because I'm God and trusted me with my time sign in his life. You were mad because you didn't get what you thought you got. You've been a preacher. You've been doing all this and all. How dare this happen? I said, yes, Lord, I repent. He said, you should because your faith is not strong. And you can't have that kind of faith going into this age because there's going to be many many in God's house that's going to be faced with things they never thought they'd face. There's going to be trials and tribulations and persecution like you've never seen. Can you praise me in the midst of the fire of the world 
and stay in the fire of my altar? I said, yes, Lord. I reckon I better. He says, yes, sir, you better. I got chastised. And I give God glory for what I've seen. But to be honest with you, deep down in my spirit, I was still mad at God. Because he's blind and he don't see. I'm not still mad at him. I didn't know it. But see, I pacified the fact. But you see, it doesn't give out the fact that I'm still praying for his eyesight. Still to this day. I'll never be satisfied. But nevertheless, what I'm showing you is it was my attitude at the moment that I went through the fire. What's your attitude for the fire you're going through right now? What about the moment you're in right now? How do you react when the tough times come your way? Do you fall apart, which you should at times, but do you fall back up? Do the first words out of your mouth is desperation or is it God? You got to move right now. I'm challenging you today to listen to me. It is a time and a season for God's church to open her mouth and praise and shout and be corporate together and not allow the enemy to drag you out from any discipleship and stay close because people next to you and around you need you to see you testify about the goodness of God. It's a growing period for the church because he's getting us ready to keep going forward and still carry his fire. So my grandson is good, but not good enough for me. God said, I got news for you. It don't matter. You got to trust me. Now, I'll tell you this and we'll close. That grandson was laying in, a, in the hospital. And my son was there and his other grandfather, the three patrons that were there. And the surgeon came in and said, I'm going to tell you something. We probably not going to see this boy live much longer. He's not going to make it. He's tumors. He's just, he ain't going to make it. My son had more faith than I did, and he taught me something. Picked that baby up in the front of that surgeon and us, and held that baby up, and he said, God, I want to tell you something right now. Thank you for this baby. I want to thank you that you gave me this baby for whatever time he's here. I don't care one way or the other. It doesn't matter what I think. I know that I trust him to you. I give him to you, and you do as you please, but I want you to know And I'm thankful for the gift that you gave me. But I didn't know is that faith drilled up in him because when he went off to college, he was bound by a lot of things. He had a terrible pornography addiction. He went through all kinds of things in college. But in college, he got delivered. He got set free. And he started a men's Bible study college men and on campus he started a men's bible study and men were getting set free and God moved through that bible study completely this was before the baby was born it was way back because he got delivered listen to me because he got delivered he got delivered from sin from pornography and things of that nature he got delivered but when he got delivered he got busy now listen to me during that bible study I did not know that one day when God was moving in that study, the Holy Spirit came into that room and spoke to him. Glory touched his heart. He told him this, Josh, there's going to be a time in your life that you will raise a special needs child. God told him that would happen. He said, the way that you handle this will bring a great testimony to me. Didn't know that. Didn't know it for years after. Because he got delivered. Don't go into this new year addicted to sin of any type. From drugs, pornography, to gossip, to hurtful hearts, or to be like me and say, God, that ain't good enough for me. That's a tough thing for me to tell you, but it's true. And this house is full, as many houses across America, out of convenient Christians. Oh my God, I can't believe that. Doing away at the 8 o'clock service. I can't believe they're doing away with it. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. 
How am I going to work that into my into my my schedule on Sunday? How am I going to work that out? Oh my God! Oh my God! The shifter's changing. How am I going to? What's going on? My, oh my God! Lord, you've moved me out of this for a minute. What am I doing? It's not working the way I want it to. How come I'm not moving where I not? How come? How come I keep going back to get delivered and I keep falling back? It's because you've not become a disciple or you've stayed out of the fire. So today I want to challenge you. Joy to the world. God's on your side. God wants to use you. God wants to set you free wherever you're at. And whatever you're doing, He wants you to allow Him to move through you and let the kingdom time set of what a child of God's to be in dictate their movements. Not a calendar, but dictate its movement. So I challenge you today, don't you walk out of here addicted to anything. Don't you walk out of here messed up, stoned up, stuck up, broke up, church broke, whatever it is. You don't have to. It's time. It's time to grow up so that you can let God show up. Man, I feel glory to God. Put your hands for a moment. Lord, this is prayer. I got to stop. I got 20 pages. I got more, but I'm listening to the Lord. All right. Father, right now, we're getting ready to move into a time of challenge. A time where it's selfishness has to go. Humility needs to set in. But Father God, I got, I cannot be, I cannot be regulated or led by my feelings anymore. I have to be led by the Spirit. And Lord, I signed up on the day that I received Christ as my Savior. I signed up that I'm a vessel you work through. Father, I repent because this vessel is not allowing you to work through me many times. Father God, I, I pray right now that I come to understand that in this earthen vessel, you, you abode because I invited you in. And on that day, I died to Christ. So it's not about my accomplishments or my well-laid plans. It's about today. Father, help me walk into kingdom plans. Help me love like Christ, but walk through the mandates of the world. Father God, move me forward, and I refuse to walk backward into this new year. I'm going to be launched into a whole new mindset because Christ is my Savior. Lift your hands and stand up for a moment. Just keep them raised. I want you to do that. This bit's a submission thing. Come on, just lift your hands right now. I'm going to ask you to hold tight for a moment. Holy Spirit's moving in our midst right now. If there's anything in your life, anything, that you know that's there, I got news for you. God already knows it. If there's any hesitancy, don't stop. You move forward when I tell you in a moment. It's not about pride. It's not about what people think. It's about you and God. You are, I want to tell you what you're doing. You're making, some of you are kicking the devil's teeth out this morning. You're finally going to step out and you're going to move by the Spirit, led by His Spirit this morning because our city is under siege and we're going to break it by our testimony. So this morning, let revival hit. As we walk into this change the next few weeks to reorder, refire, rekindle, do a little fasting, do a little shifting, do a lot of praying, and get ready because the war's on. And we're going to go in well prepared to move forward and carry the fire. Every person in here right now, I want you to hear me. Move to this altar right now, right now. The Lord, right now, right now. Get in this fire right now. I'm telling you, it's a 22. God is moving you forward. Come quickly. Don't hesitate. Don't hesitate. Don't let your pride get in the way. Don't hesitate. And move in close so others can get in. You can kneel. You can sit in the front row. If you want to, sit in the front row, whatever. But I don't want you to hesitate. I want you to push in tight. I want you to get in here. I want you to get in there tight. I want you to move in. I want you to keep coming in. Get up there. Just get your hands up. Put your hand on somebody's shoulder in front of you or behind you right now. Just touch them on the shoulder. Right now, unified in the body right now. Put your hand on each other, somebody's shoulder right there. Right there, just lift your hands right now. Now I want you to say this to me. Jesus, I'm forgiven of my sins. I confess them to you right now. Today, by order of your kingdom and your time set, I'm stepping in to the supernatural of the natural of God. 
today I proclaim my salvation. Today I receive deliverance. Not because someone pulled it out of me. Because I am releasing these to you by submission. Right now, Lord, not my mind, but your mind. Right now, your anointing. Help me. Move through me. Healings will come on the street. Healings will come on your job site. The joy of the Lord. Father, let the, oh, I feel that fire right now. Let the fire begin to blow in here. Somebody release that right now. Come on, somebody. The more you release, the more you're empowered. Father God, let us soon that it come. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost right now. It's your time. I feel it breaking. I feel it breaking. Yay. You on the internet, put your hands and scream. I feel it breaking. Come on, somebody. Yay. Break it. Joy. Come on. Hey. Hey. Come on, somebody. Shandarabakuma. Deliverance. Deliverance. Shakatakate. Hey. Pray for your nation. Pray for your nation. Pray for your city. Pray for your state. Pray for your church. Pray for the church. Surround it with prayer. Surround your church. Gates of hell will not prevail against your mighty church. We send her forth right now. Hey. Wow. Come on. Come on. No matter what comes against me. No matter what persecution. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, yay, drugs go, alcohol go, hatred go, unforgiveness go, gossip go, my health, my best laid plans, wreck them Lord, more Lord, somebody pray in the Holy Ghost, You beckon me, you beckon me to leave all that I've known. Somebody, I feel the all of us here. Leave all that I've known. Come on, no, no, no. You beckon me, you beckon me to call Come on. you as my own. Come on, somebody. Here I am. This is mine. This is mine. To bid me come and die. To bid me come and die. Yeah. Spirit of the living God.
Father, and strengthen us as we begin to go into more reading than we've ever read, study, prayer. We are stepping into divine days marked by your divine plan, and we want to be a part of it. Use us, Father, for your glory. But let me begin right where I'm at. Well, let me just be planning ahead when I get to a place. I start now. Right now, I just start. Releasing joy and hope and peace and grace and witness. Come on, somebody, and witness of how great my God is. Come on, somebody. Somebody says, how you doing? Let me tell you how I'm doing. God's good. They either reject it or not, but just start out that way instead of saying, oh, this weather's pretty cool, isn't it? No, man. It's good because God is good. God is great. You don't have to preach sermon to it. Somebody say, joy, release, in the name of Jesus. Our release in the name of Jesus. Say, confidence. I have confidence in my God to walk my days on this earth directed by him. And I receive your word that no matter what comes at me, it will not affect. I see now, see? <laughs> this is a tough one to say. You got to live it, some of you. No matter what comes my way, it will not affect my relationship with you. Why can you say that? Listen to me. It's because I taught you a principle today. You are kingdom kids. You're not of this world. You work in a kingdom dynamics that's way above the calendar and way above the marks of any man. That's the way you can walk in to a situation above it, led by the Spirit of God, but ask God to help you notice in His Word the now times of God. And you'll find that His presence comes and revelation is released. Don't come in God's house without giving praise and worship. Don't come in here unless you come to this altar and get your medicine. Don't leave here until you get purged so that you're effective because hell wants to keep you silent. And I hate hell enough to be allowed now for Jesus, I'll tell you right now, no matter what. Giving praise in this house this morning. Come on. Come on. Come on, giving praise. God's given you a... Sundays. We're going to pack in here. And it's good to be brothers and sisters sometimes. And you know, when you go to a gymnasium and there's a basketball game, it's okay when there's a few, but it's powerful when it's packed. There's something about the voice that rumbles out of God's house that hits a city that shakes hell at the very core. It's time for us to get up, get healed up, stay fired up, and go out be a witness. Simple stuff, right? Smile when you do it. Tell people about Jesus. We'll see you Wednesday night. Wow, building the body, man. Be praying over this. Get ready. We're going to have some more church. You on the internet, we love you. You get ready. You're going to see us shaking at the crossroads of America like you've never seen. Hold on, pray up, and get ready.